Welcome everybody to another Indie Game Spotlight here on the channel. Recently I got three very different press keys from developers for games to look at, but either I wasn't really enjoying the game, or there wasn't a lot for me to dedicate a full video to. So, we're going to split things up into three different parts, and we're going to start with Creepy Road. This is a Metal Slug inspired 2D shooter that I think unfortunately misses what makes those games work. The story is that our girlfriend has been kidnapped, carnies have been turned violent, and we have to save the day with our pistol with unlimited ammo. The levels themselves are pretty basic. I like the cartoon visuals, but everything about the gunplay just doesn't feel all that nice. Catch my Enemies are very simple, they're just going to run at you. Now, it's not an unlimited amount of enemies, there's just a lot of them. But yeah, if you're expecting good gunplay, it's not here. Also, it's a very interesting UI flub. The left button moves your uh, targeting cursor, your weapon selector, to the right, and the right button moves it to the left. That just seems like a pretty uh, simple issue. But most areas or every level has this kind of section where you have to just fight an arena. Now I'm playing this on medium difficulty because I found it too annoying on hard. Enemies just have a lot of health and it just takes a long time to fight them. Don't die. But basically, it just follows this pattern. Come on. Go away. Are they dead? I need to get to a checkpoint, or we'll have to repeat that whole part over again. Also, the analog stick sensitivity is so high that sometimes when I'm moving down and my thumb just slightly goes to the left, he turns. So we'll have to repeat. Alright, good, there's a checkpoint. Right, I don't know what that is. Okay. But every level just follows the same general pattern. You also have no defensive actions. Ooh. Also, the game will auto change your gun when you pick up a new one. Oh, here we go again. Yeah, there's just no real way to do any kind of defense. Oh. The guns kind of lock that pop that we see in a lot of older or other shoot em ups. Pick that up last. And if you're wondering, there are boss fights. There are a few, but not too many. Each essentially act ends with a boss, which is more or less a pattern fight. Again, they could have done a better job with these controls. Sorry, AK. Let's hope we're almost on this level. Or there's some food up ahead. Ooh. Oh, Alright, so that's the level. Again, there's just not a lot here to really go on. 
And you also lose your weapons at the start of each new level. I think when we play that game, uh, Guns, uh, Gore, and Cannoli 2, that had a little bit more variety in terms of the enemies and just the level structure. This just doesn't seem to be doing all that much. And you have to kill the enemies before you get to an arena fight, because they will engage you, or they will just kind of follow you. I hope you like hearing the same sound bites repeated again and again. That's the first time a checkpoint occurred before an arena. Oh good, their grenades uh, will explode on impact, mine don't. So you have to angle it. Is that all of them? And Molotovs will hurt you. Yeah, again, the analog stick feels a little uh, too sensitive. Oh. Is that all of them? What do you say? I don't know why they're not spawning. Oh, there you go. That was weird. They didn't give me the alert to move on. Or just happened so fast. And the shotgun can shoot through walls or ceilings, but your pistol can't. Oh, wait, never mind. Didn't work when I did previously in an earlier level. Made space on the environment, too. That was actually a quick level. <laughs> so I believe I should be nearing the boss. But again, what you see is pretty much what you get. Most of the areas are very flat, with some exceptions. But typically, you just pick a direction and just run in it. Uh -oh. Yes, yeah, so those are suicidal death pandas up there. I'm pretty sure that's a. S right there, that's a sound fight from Sirius Sam, the Kamikazes. Not that far. Alright, is that everybody? And yeah, again, once you get a powerful weapon, just run to the right. And, or just run one direction, you should be good. Alright, we're playing a little differently here. Let's head up. Ow. Yeah, if I stay in that fire, I will probably die in like a few seconds. Okay. I'm assuming this is the last screw. Oh, come on. And again, the weapon swap, that's just a very uh, beginner's mistake there in terms of the UI. But, I think with that, we have two other games to look at, so let's move on to our next one. 
the second game that I want to take a look at for this spotlight is Son of a Witch. This is a game that looks like Castle Crashers in terms of that kind of beat em up look and feel, but this plays more like a roguelike. And while there's not necessarily anything bad in it like I didn't like with a, our last game, the problem that I have is that this is one of those titles that's definitely built around a multiplayer or co-op experience. So, the idea of course is we have up to four players, and there's different classes of characters that you can choose from, and they are unlocked as you play and complete stuff, which is a pretty good persistent system. Uh, let's see, let's go for this guy. Has a very simple aesthetic to it, but again, it kind of harkens back to that days of when we were playing Castle Crashers. Come on, game, do it. And it does have both local and online multiplayer. Here's our character. You have a light and heavy attack. The area is procedurally generated. There's that. At least the bomb didn't go off. Combat is on the very basic side. You're not going to get some of like, the crazier moves and things like that that we saw in Castle Crashers. Let's switch the items around like so. so. Here are pets. Which supposedly, from what we, I learned from the tutorial, there's no guard. Oh, never mind. Well, he's going to probably kill me here. I guess the car must come. I guess it was only in the tutorial. So chances are I'm going to get killed. Well, there's your lesson learned, folks. But the combat is just very simplistic. Again, it was designed around having four people play at the same time. So let's see. Yeah. So as you can see, the area has been procedurally built. I can't grab enemies or stuff like that. I'll grab this book for the health. Let's try it. is nice and peaceful. So I need to find the key to open up the door to get to the next area. I'm not sure what that just did. And you can also summon staffs. You can see how the items can be slotted into either your basic weapon or your heavy or your heavy attack. What do we have here? Stop voodooing me, buddy. Your weapon. And again, the game definitely seems like it's balanced and designed. Let's try that. There we go. Uh, let's take that. Yeah, I think the axe is probably going to be better. 
two items and pay for them both. That's good. Oh. And it's boss time. Again, the enemies have very basic AI to them. It kind of reminds me of, like, of a beat em back in the day. And again, I cannot block. But... That unlocks some new things for the persistence. Triple melee, huh? I'll take it. Let's see what else do we have? Nothing in there. Alright, so that unlocks the next area. Let's see, can I pull up the map? A little bit better. Just for the heck of it, especially since you move very fast, I'm gonna hit back up here. I can blow open that door. Yay, treasure. Oh, we need a key. Yep, no uh, chest breaking, it looks like. I dare? Eh, why not? Nope, that did not work. And we're not a range class either, so let's head down here and we'll move on to area two. Now the areas or the biomes are fixed. Don't think I can go back. But new enemies. I guess it is kind of disturbing how guys kind of like fly out. You see their soul fly away there. is a little funky, I would say. There we go. Also be nice that we'll just automatically pick up items if we already have a copy of them. Ah, you can't get me, buddy. Right. We're not going that way. Again, uh, some of which I don't see this as being a bad game, but it does feel a little bit limited if you're just playing the solo. You have friends who can play with you, though. You'll get kind of get like that roguelike meets Castle Crasher feel to it. Die. Just step on. Uh oh. Hello, dragons. How are you doing? <laughs> oh, that worked. Say for the fact that we are fighting the old thing. Uh, it's up to four players. Alright, we 
unlock something new. So I'm assuming this will take us to area three. Eat some grapes. doesn't regenerate, so this could be over fairly quickly. unless all the enemies are killed, or we use a bomb, similar to the buying of eyes. There we go. Until then, when you hold some money. Take this till either I die or the end of this stage. It would be nice to have some kind of defensive item or defensive option. Get him. Everybody down. Good. Can I break this? No. No. Don't tell me I am in trouble here. I think I'm still poisoned and I don't know how to cure that. Oh, never mind, I'm dead. So, did we unlock anything? Okay, so that quest is what we saw earlier. I, from what I'm seeing, the quests themselves are kind of in fixed places. So, I'm assuming if we go back here for a second, we're always going to find that pet person. Okay, so there we go. And so when we complete this quest, or we complete this area, we'll unlock that character for future plays. Ah, and the bulk that we picked up is freezing the enemies now when we go in. So some of the witch has a good uh, foundation to it, but again, I just wish that the core gameplay of the combat was a little bit more involved. Because playing this with one person, or just playing this solo, there's just not a lot here. But, if you have friends who can play this with you, you'll get a lot more enjoyment out of it. Bet that the boss should be very close. And again, very basic procedural generation, but that's enough for games like this. Just enough that it keeps some sense of variance. Maybe a little too peaceful, though. Alright. Get her. 
So I just want to see what happens when we unlock that glitz. Just like in Dark Souls, attacking the backside is always the best option. Alright. It's upgraded. There's our permit. And so this should give me an upgrade. Or this should unlock something. Good. So he's now been permanently unlocked. But with that said, let's move on to the third and last game for this spotlight. For the third game and last one for tonight, this is Hexologic. This is a puzzle game that just was released, and the developers describe it as like a Sudoku-esque, try saying that ten times fast, puzzle. And while it's probably the least complicated game we're looking at in this video, it does have, it does, I think, what it's set out to do. And before we begin, of course, anytime we play a puzzle game, I'm basically spoiling solutions, so keep that in mind. The objective of Hexologic is that we need each row to equal the numbers as we place little pips, as you can see right there. So it has to line up, and that's similar to Sudoku. So hopefully I'm going to do this and not be a complete idiot about it. We shall see. You can only go, at least for right now, up to three. Of course, the theme or the background doesn't really correspond to what we're doing, but that's okay. So this is telling me that must be a two. And just like with something like Sudoku or even Pacross, the best way to solve these puzzles is to do the ones that you know or the guarantee ones. So this is telling me because it was two, I can only have two or one pip in each row that kind of solved itself. Now the seven is going to be tricky. There we go. The description boasted different worlds. So I'm assuming this is world one right now. I don't know what they're changing in between. So this should... There we go. And again, this is not a game that you're going to be playing for hours upon hours on end, but it's a good little time waster and a brain teaser, I would say. So how are we doing this? Well, that's six, so that kind of solves itself, which means that solves itself. There we go. Bingo. And I'm a big Sudoku fan myself, so this kind of stuff does, you know, hit that bell or strike that bell for me. So we have a five, a three. Let's see. This doesn't do anything for me. That must be a two. Unless I go here, three, six. 
six. This has to be a three. This is great, folks. I seem to have painted myself into a trap here by trying to do something that I'm having trouble with. Oh, it's always one, isn't it? Three, six, seven. Well, let's think. I can't go four. So this has got to be right. And so does this. Four, which means that this is forced as well. No, that's forced, and that's forced. One. Hmm. There we go. Good for me. We'll do a few more, and then we'll wrap it up. I would like to see if we can get to some kind of new mechanic. But I don't know we'll have that time. Right, so this is either a three and a two or a two and a three. Well, actually, that solves itself. Oh, wait. My mistake. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's a three. And you can tell which direction based on the little triangle there. So that takes care of that. Which takes care of that. Three, four, five, six. There we go. Let's see. It doesn't show me how many are in each one. has got to be a one. Let's see. One, three, six, no. Yeah. So this has to be that to correspond there, which makes that work there. Four, five, six, seven. Oh, I'm sorry. I can't count today. I'm making up for it, folks. Right, so that has to be a 2. This has to be a 2, 3, or a 3, 2. Music is nice and relaxing, too. This must be... Because there's no other way to do that. puzzles, we are kind of having to deduce what you know for certainty are always good for me.
interesting. So this is locked. That's locked. Or maybe not. one that's completely certain for right now. We're so close to getting to the end of this chapter. So that's locked in. That's a guarantee. Which means that that's a guarantee pair. Which in theory means that and that. So the only uncertainty is going to be folks. There's that. Which guarantees that. What's that in? Alright, we're doing it. Again, anything more, I'm basically spoiling even more of this game. So, I like Hexalogic. Again, it's not the most complicated game, but if you're looking for that puzzle kind of experience, and you like Sudoku's, definitely check it out. But, that is going to do it for this Triple Game Spotlight. So, thank you so much for watching. If you'd like me to look at your game in the future, please don't hesitate to get in touch. But check back for daily discussions on game design here and on game wisdom, where examine the art and science of games. Until next time, take care. Before we get to the credits, just want to give a quick shout out to the fans and supporters over on patreon.com slash GWBicer. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, be sure to like and subscribe to the channel. Check back around 10 Eastern for regular streaming. If you like suggest games for me to cover or topics to talk about, let me know in the comments below. For a collection of my writings as well as weekly podcasts on design, check out game-wisdom.com. To support the Game Wisdom Patreon, you can find us on there on patreon.com slash gwbicer. A dollar will get you into our private Discord channel where we talk game topics and more. Five dollars will get you voting privileges for any major event, including the Saturday Night Grab Bag, Patreon-funded goals, and more. Thanks again for watching, and I hope you enjoy more videos here on the Game Wisdom YouTube channel.